My name is Leilani and this is our channel Confessions of a Messianic Mom and I have a confession for you. Huh. So I joined this collaboration and this is a collaboration with a group of wonderful amazing moms hosted by Dina over at Pursuing Peace which I'm going to stick a link down to our channel down below as well as the playlist to this collaboration but the name of the collaboration is called Mom Faith Baskets. And I was gonna use it for my other channel, but then I realized it was more suited for this channel. And then I realized that I, I don't have a faith basket. I actually don't even think I have quiet time dedicated and scheduled to myself. I'm not that mom. I don't, I don't schedule quiet time. I get it when I can. And that's just the reality of my life. And it's kind of embarrassing. And after waking up and realizing the reality of this, which is awful that I don't set aside time for the Lord, I'm still going to make this video and share with you how this craziness works. And I think it does work. It could be better, but it works. First thing I want to say is when I do Bible studies, I tend to do them with my kids or my husband or my kids and my husband, I, I kind of like it that way because I feel like I can kind of feed off of them and ask them questions and allow them to ask me questions and I can get a little more deeper into the Word of God. And so one of the Bible studies that I do with my kids is this one right here. Um, I'm going to be honest, I have to kind of modify it a little bit. It's Amazing Stories for Young Believers. I, it's a devotional. It's just a simple devotional and it goes through the entire Bible. And um, yeah, 366 days. They have February 29th in there. Another thing that we have gone through, and this is more scholarly and academic, but is Apologia's book on biblical worldviews of God and truth. Who is God and can I really know him? My kids actually like this book. We've learned a lot about the Trinity. It's just a really good read. I don't do the workbook with it because I really do didn't want to make this work. My husband did spend a lot of time with my kids early on, really making them work and memorize scripture and definitions and what is grace, what is mercy. And they know all that stuff and they have it memorized, which is great, but they were getting so frustrated. And when I said, hey, it's time to sit down and have a Bible study, they didn't want to do it because they hated it. So I thought it'd be nice just to kind of take a little break, do some devotionals, do this book and said, take some time to talk about things and pray. And that's just how we've been kind of doing it. And that's my quiet time as well, because I, I start to meditate on these things and, and maybe there's something that sticks out to me and I just kind of go with it. And I think about it as I do the dishes and I'll talk to God as I'm going to turn the TV off or, you know, those little free times that you have when you're a mom and they just kind of happen and you make the most of them. Another thing we've been doing is during this whole like quarantine, it's not really quarantine, it's self-isolation, is we have been reading the books of Narnia. We've been doing these books together as a family and they're written for kids, I guess, but there should be written for adults. I think he wrote it, wrote it for both of us. There's so much symbolism and, and meaning, biblical meaning. C.S. Lewis, God used him tremendously. And if you've ever read, or Disney doesn't do justice to this one. Disney, of course, ruined this book. I'm just gonna be totally honest with you guys. Um, if you ever have read The Dawn Treader, there is a part, I'm just going to tell you, because I already did it in my Facebook Live, where Lucy is reading this big book of magic, and there's a story that she reads, and she says that it was the most beautiful story that she's ever read, but as soon as she flipped the page, she forgot it. And she was kind of sad, but she couldn't turn the page back to remember it. She just knew that it was a beautiful story. And so, you know, it goes on a little bit more. She reads the spell that she needs to read, and then Aslan appears, which if you're not familiar with The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, by the way, this is spoilers, you know that Aslan's in this story. And he comes up, and she says, hey, can you tell me, after all is said and done, she says, hey, can you tell me that story that I just read because I don't remember anything except that there was a cup, a hill, a tree, and a sword which if you look at all those four elements, there's the Passover cup, the sword. I'm, I don't really know if I know what that represents. I think it might be the sword that cuts Peter's ear or it could be, 
I don't know what else it could be, the, you know. And then, of course, the tree representing the cross, the green hill, Calvary. So I was like, <laughs> and then he says, it gets even better. Aslan says, I will be telling you that story over and over and over again. So don't worry. And it's like, <laughs> and this is so perfect for me because it's this idea that I totally do. I totally forget about the Lord during the day. I get so busy. And then the Lord himself has to remind me of his story, what's in scripture. And this, I mean, this totally works for this collaboration because I don't have really a designated quiet time. So I forget sometimes his story, but he always, he comes back and reminds me. So this, these books and reading them with my kids are not only ministering to me, but well, they're not only ministering to my kids, but they're ministering to me tremendously. I know they're not scripture, but we do, after we finish reading and we all start talking about him. And even my dear sweet Hannah, um, the, another scene in the book has to do with the dragon and the lion. Oh, that's such a good part. You have to read the book, so I'm not going to spoil it. But my daughter was reenacting that scene with um, fruit. <laughs> if you can imagine that. There was at one point in my life that I did have quiet time and I read a really, really, really good book. And it is called Assumptions That Affect Our Lives, How Worldview Determines Values That Influence Behavior Shape Culture. Okay, I'm a nerd. And when I want to study scripture, I want to go deep, 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 deep. And I, this goes into scripture. This is talking about worldviews and how it shapes us. And um, there's scripture throughout. It's not like a workbook or a Bible study, but this is something that I read during quiet time. That quiet time, ironically, was when Naomi was in the hospital because that's when I had the most quiet time. And I read this book in like three days. But I wanted to share this because this is such an amazing book, um, Christian Overman. I'll put a link in the description box below, but it's in depth and it's just a beautiful way of just really making you see how you see things. When I do have a second to myself, like now, present time, I, I am addicted to certain things on this phone. I utilize my Bible app. I have, um, if you're familiar with the Bible app, right, you can hook up with friends, which I have done. And um, I have a couple of friends that like to uh, highlight scriptures and repost them to the Bible app page, which is a nice little reminder because in the middle of dishes, I'll get a little bing on my phone and I look and it's a Bible verse. And it's a friend of mine that put it up and it's kind of cool because it reminds me, I don't know, it's like, hey, Leilani, wake up. Here's a little reminder. I am slightly addicted to this wonderful thing and some YouTube channels that I like to listen to in the background. I think my favorite channel, especially now that I've kind of been binge watching it, is one called Messiah Matters. It is um, Rob and Caleb, the Rob and Caleb show. And um, if you don't know who they are, um, Caleb is the son of Tim Haig. Tim Haig is a um, writer within the Messianic movement. I, I honestly think he deserves more credit than he gets. Um, he used to write with First Fruits of Zion, but he no longer does. Um, and speaking of First Fruits of Zion, um, I do like their Bible study. Me and my husband have gone through this during our quiet time. This was a version way before Tim Haig left Torah Club, um, or First Fruits of Zion. Um, it's really nice. This one specifically was a Messianic commentary on the weekly portions. So it's Shadows of Messiah, and I, basically it's it's going to go through Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and show you how Messiah is basically all up in that. <laughs> I really like these. I need to go through them again. There's a couple of uh, volumes that we have. Speaking of volumes, um, at one point I did something called BSF, and um, I don't do it anymore because they can't watch all of my kids. And that to me was a really good forced quiet time because I, I'm one of those people when you give me work, I've got to complete it and that's what I would do. And um, we went through in BSF, um, the book of Matthew, and I went back to this commentary, which this one is actually written by Tim Haig himself. Um, it's the whole book of Matthew. And this is not the whole one. This is just uh, chapters one through seven. And so you can see it's really, it's 
Okay, this is the kind of Bible studies that I do in my quiet time. Yes, I pray. Yes, I listen to music. But the time that I spend with the Lord that seems the most productive is when I'm really, really in deep to his scriptures. And that's really why when I don't have time to have my quiet time, I'll turn on the Robin Caleb show. Or I do the Bible studies with my kids and we talk in depth. My kids, I know they're young, but we, we get pretty in depth. And that's why I'm also very, very frustrated because I cannot find many Bible studies out there that I can enjoy with my kids because in my opinion, most of them are fluff. It doesn't help much that we are Messianic as opposed to Christian, which we're, I mean, if you want to go into the whole Messianic Christian thing, if you don't know the difference between the two, there's really not much. Um, the biggest difference, I, the biggest difference is that um, we celebrate the high holidays and we do, we celebrate um, Shabbat on Saturday as well as follow the Torah. So we keep kosher, lots of other little details. There's stuff that um, I believe I should be doing that I don't do. <laughs> That's a whole nother video. <laughs> Not this one. Another thing that we're doing right now for our mom's basket is we're reading through the counting of the Omer. If you're not familiar with the counting of the Omer, it's kind of like a countdown to Shavuot. Christians call it Pentecost. So we're counting down to those days. There's, um, a, a, we have a devotional that is put out by my congregation. The um, rabbi of the congregation wrote it, put it out, and we all kind of read it and do it together as a congregation at home. And we do that every day. And it's really quick, easy. We talk about it with the kids, and actually we do that with the whole family. And that's kind of like a nice little quiet time. So I hope this video met the criteria of the collaboration. I know we don't have a basket, but I am kind of slightly saddened and convicted that I don't have time set aside. I don't know. I'm just being honest with you guys. I don't have time in the day. I have four kids. I have one with special needs. We're in therapy six sessions a day. I am homeschooling all of them. Not to mention we have two co-ops that we're a part of, and I am the children's leader or minister. I don't even know what you want to call me. I'm the Shabbat school coordinator. I think that's my title for our congregation and um, which is kind of like a Sunday school coordinator. Um, I'll be honest, preparing some of those lesson plans is kind of like quiet time to me. I mean, that's the honest truth. I have nuggets of the Lord and his word throughout the day. I do, but I'm not that person who wakes up at 5 a.m. and pulls out my cup of coffee and my journal and my Bible and my highlighters and spend 15, 20 minutes reading the Word of God. I don't do that. I do that spontaneously, and I don't think I will ever be that person, to be quite honest. That's not my personality, but I do love the Lord with all my heart. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Ilani. This channel is called Confessions of a Messianic Mom. You are welcome to subscribe to this channel. When I get a chance, I upload. It's not very consistent. It's when I feel led to. And my other channel is entitled Living with Eve. Yes, I talk about my faith in that channel as well, but that channel is really strictly geared towards the journey of my daughter and our family as we raise a child with Down syndrome and all of our challenges, our ups and downs, our successes. And it's there basically to encourage you and to also help families that also have special needs children where they need support. And of course, homeschool families as well because we homeschool and that just adds some more character. So I'm just gonna let you go. This is uh, our channel if you wanna subscribe as well as Living with Eve and some other videos around my face. So I will see you later. Bye.